Let's check out Concert Strings 3. Hey, Tim. So, uh, you just pull up the Concert th uh, Strings 3 uh, folder. Uh, it does not have like a library. Uh, you have to go into the folder structure. And then you have basically the first violins and the second violins. Once you load up a patch on this <clears throat> Concert Strings 2 or Concert Strings 3, it brings in all the articulations. So drag it in. Now the cool concept behind Concert Strings 3 was to record every string instrument individually. So they actually have 16 solo violins, okay, in a setting, you know, in the proper places and record it with the microphones properly. So it sounds like this, listen. Okay, one thing I wanted to say about Concert Strings 3 versus the other two, Legacy and Concert Strings 2, is for some reason, I feel this Concert Strings 3 is a step backwards from those two. The first thing you'll notice is they don't have smart legato. They only have legato or turn legato off. It doesn't have smart legato. I mean, you can get away with if you just perfectly press the keys at the same time. There, I got a chord, but it's really, uh, I mean, I only got away with that because I pressed them all at the same millisecond. Um, it's very sensitive. If I try again, there, see, pain in the ass. That's a chord. Excuse my French. Uh, so the first thing I had to do when loading up this library was turn off legato. Now check out how the auto divisi sounds though. This is very cool. So if I play a chord, if I play a single note, it's got all 16 players. Okay. But if I play a chord, say a four part chord, It sounds fantastic. I think that really is the forte of this particular library, is lush chords just perfectly divisied. I really think that's the uh, positive in this library. Uh, so some of the negatives though for me are, look at this, they've got this soltasto effect here. Which to me has very negligible results. And it's just a simulation by the way. Um, Ruben, yeah, the audio is coming through my mic but I've got it set to Omni so it's pretty faithful. But it is mono, yeah. I've been looking for the last three days on how to uh, get the Pro Tools output into my streaming software, and uh, we'll get there sometime. But no, right now it's mono. But that is one of the cool things is you can pan all the instruments uh, across the stage however you want, individually by chair, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing you can do is you can set the attack and release of every articulation separately. Each one of these little sliders here represents a different kind of attack for the different articulations. So Arco Expressivo uh, has a quick attack, whereas Arco Legato has a slower attack. And then you have the velocity sensitivity, which would change the attack as you play. So anyway, what I was saying is that the Soltasto effect, uh, which is just an effect, all these things under playing style here, I found don't really work very well. So if I were to pull this down, now the connect bowing that uh, you you get with A0, let's see, there we go. That's so if you um, uh, play, let's see, is that the one where, yeah, if you play the same note twice, I believe. Yeah, so if I didn't have connect bowing on, you get that space between it, see? But if you have it on, it has a nice, kind of like they do the crossfading for you. 
it's not really like a high-end technology I found all these playing styles on the left hand side for like they have with LAS or VSL where they recorded them actually moving from a particular note to another particular note and then the engine recognizes that and then brings that sample cross fades it right in the transition of it and then you get to the destination note in this one I find that they simulated all those things like let's check out the portamento so normally you have this Oops, let's put on legato now let's add portamento what's this one oops oh okay you have to press it for the note there did you hear it Now that's not legato, that's portamento. So when you want to have that exaggerated uh, movement from note to note. Now I think they missed a, an opportunity here because they have 16 separate chairs that they recorded. They should have programmed it so that they all move to that note with different arcs and different speeds and how they got there. And so you get, you know, a more humanized portamento and a more humanized legato and and all and, and in all respects like that so uh another thing that they claim to have that i was very excited about i probably bought this bundle because of this feature but it turns out to be not true is this l hand shift there what they're talking about there is instead of playing a particular note on the next string because it's higher if you're moving up a fifth for instance uh, it will stay on the string and then play that note that's up above on that string which makes the note that's up above a little bit darker silkier because it's on the fatter string of the violin or the cello or whatever you're on okay so I figured that was something they really sampled but it's simulated so all it does is it gives you some kind of a portamento to simulate the way a player would reach that note, which is the same as portamento. So uh, let's see, if I push this button here, we should get that. Gives you a, a pretty nice, expressive jump to the note, which is cool, but unfortunately it's not real, it's simulated, but it sounds pretty good. I'm sure you guys agree. It sounds okay. Uh, slur on overlap is on right now, so... I also noticed that the legatos uh, really just fade out the last note and then fade in the next note and sort of overlap them. It creates like an overlap. It's not actual legato. They didn't record legato like VSL did and Last did and a lot of these other libraries, LA scoring strings. So when I go to another note, it's just fading out the first note a little bit after it brings in the next note. Hey, but for 99 bucks, it's actually pretty good. But I feel this library in many ways is a bit overpriced at $4.99. I believe it is normally just this one, Concert Strings 3. Um, and if I press Sordini here, it's simulated mutes. It's not a recording of them with mutes on. But uh, I've actually heard simulated muting much better than that. Uh, the Friedlander solo violin has uh, simulated muting, has simulated ponticello, and simulated saltasto, and they're all absolutely perfect. This one sounds like they put a uh, low pass filter on. I mean, I could have did that with EQ, you know? <laughs> That's really not intelligent. So those are all the playing style, style features over there on the left. Now, I'm gonna take off Legato, and we'll go over to Arco Legato, which, I, which is like a little bit more um, accented. Versus... Okay. 
And then there's, of course, Marcato. I do like how they give you all the way up to the high G. <laughs> And it is correctly divising the marcato line, the chords there. You might not be used to that because see like here I'm playing a six part chord and it's not as big as, as one note. <laughs> well, guess what guys, reality check, that's how it actually is with the real orchestra. If you, the more notes you divide up your music, the weaker the strings sound. But you do get that lush sound if you know how to orchestrate it, you know, the tent, the tight, the, the clusters. All right, and then there's Marcato Molto. And Tremolo. I put that uh, to sol tosto. It sounds kind of like a viola, like fat bodied. Here's without compared to with. It's just an effect. They're just playing around with the EQ. Not too happy about that. And let's say Sordini tremolo. It's a hack. It's <laughs> just putting a low pass filter on there. That's really not tr what Tremolo Sordini sounds like, guys. But it is a very nice Tremolo patch. And now the Pizzicato. You can change the mic distance. Look at that over here. There's very close. Or mic distance very far. And they got it right in the middle, which I like. And now it has loosened entrances, okay? So if I put those to tight, we have... We have 16 violins playing very tight. If I put it really loose... Sounds exactly the same. So I don't know what that just did. Well, it's supposed to loosen up the pizzicato. See, this is the thing I find very frustrating about this this particular library is uh, things don't work the way you expect them to. And I don't even think they work. I, I've been going over this for about three days now. And they don't even really work when you get them working. But the cool thing is, look, you can turn off ensemble mode. So that was spiccato, by the way. that very well over my banging of the keyboard <laughs> and uh, of course it has trills that you can see this little key signature here they'll be in the key that you specify down here so if I say C sharp harmonic minor and I have the key signature on and I play a C it's gonna play C and C sharp but C sharp is gonna play well that doesn't seem to be working right Nothing in this library works, right? <laughs> All right, so now check this out. Let's go back to Arco Espressivo and let's take off the ensemble. And now we have three soloists. Now for some reason, okay, watch, I'll, I'll play them. expect if they recorded all these different violins I would expect and when I play one note I see four voices there see so each one's been recorded separately and is playing back at the same time I would expect to be able to have separate control over these instruments now the last time I used this it did not let me pick these soloists let's see what happens now yeah see it will not let me turn off these soloists I don't know why you have to have all four soloists on. I mean, talk about a missed opportunity, right? I mean, we could have 16 different soloists to choose from. 
And then when you're turning the ensemble back on, then you can turn off certain chairs if you want to get a little bit of a thinner sound. And now we're down to nothing. It's a bit of a negligible difference between the full ensemble and not. Then you just press this 12 button again and 12 pops up. Tw all 12 of them pop up and then engage again. You can choose like eight. How many of the ensemble players you want to add. Uh, hang on, I'm getting a little beach ball. Okay. And then it also has a vibrato that you can control with controller. See, when I went up to that top note, I put a bit of vibrato on there to give it a little bit of passion, right? Let's check it out. <laughs> I blurred the notes, hang on. Right? Versus if you know you do, you weren't able to vibrato during that phrase. If they had uh, recorded the vibrato in the instrument sample, for instance, you wouldn't be able to put vibrato on those upper notes of that phrase. So again, that was so they got a little passionate up high. See, um, so that's really nice that they allow you to get vibrato out of the instrument uh, with the mod wheel. Let's check out how that sounds on just the solo players. Auto performance. <laughs> Just lower the other soloist to infinity. Okay, let's give it a try. <laughs> Little of an ingenious comment there from Attila. Uh, what's the matter here? It's like almost not letting me. Whoa, it won't let me bring him down more than to 66. I don't know why. 66 is like the lowest you can bring them down to. So I can get a, like a one third different differential between them. Now let's hear the second one. like a third chair. I'm gonna turn that up a little more for you guys. And then finally the fourth chair. All right, well, what do you guys think? I personally not too impressed. I really like the Contra Strings 2 better and maybe even the legacy the best i still have to go back and forth between them uh, maybe i'll do a shootout comparison next uh, so put them all back together again and we have Without legato. Which probably sounds great on tremolo. <laughs> no, never mind, it didn't sound very good. All right, let me see if there's any last questions. So my conclusion is it was a very much a missed opportunity. The 
incredible features that they seem to have were just, you know, hack on features, EQ tricks and crossfade tricks. Um, and there's a real missed opportunity because they recorded all 16 chairs and they had an opportunity to do, you know, multi-part portamento slow, you know, aleatoric effects by having them all individually sampled like that. And you could even run that through a simulation engine and get uh, some pretty amazing effects. Uh, by having all those different samples there. So that's my review of CS3. Uh, but I still think it's worth the 99 bucks to grab this right now and the legacy and the conscious strings too. All right, thanks for watching, guys.